Connor, great to meet you. Thank you so much for taking the time today. We will be talking about smart dressings in wound care and hydrogels. But before we start, can you first tell us a bit more about your research background? So I'm a chemist, trained as a chemist. Um, I did my bachelor's degree at Brown University uh, and fell in love with with chemistry and synthetic chemistry, but also really photochemistry and physical chemistry. So I was trained by um, this phenomenal uh, physical chemist. His name is Peter Weber uh, down at Brown University. And I got to build, you know, lasers and laser beam lines and shoot molecules into vacuums and hit them and multiply excite them and look at reaction dynamics. And so really kind of fell in love with complex photochemistry and how molecules are constructed and how those that construction transforms into specific um, behavior when they're photo excited and how that behavior then manifests and can be used functionally. So really uh, got very excited early on and then um, uh, went a few uh, miles north on, uh, on 95 to, uh, to Boston and did my PhD with Sunny Shi at Harvard University, where I was able to use some of that physical chemistry background um, really in, in the biosciences. So to take lasers and combine them with advanced microscopes and, and create imaging tools and spectroscopy methodologies that allow us to really gain insight into what's happening in the body and within disease. And so um, that experience kind of uh, led me to believe that I really needed to, if I was going to do this for real, I needed to have this, I need to have a medical experience. And so I went and totally changed, did my postdoctoral studies in, uh, in cancer biology and in, 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 in imaging at, um, at Mass General Hospital. Uh, and then when I had the opportunity to, to have a group and to start my team, I kind of combined both. So it's spectroscopy and photochemistry and devices applied to real problems in clinical medicine. And so that's really what the motivation for my team's work is, no matter what we do, and um, very much um, for the work we're doing in wounds and wound dressings is very much guided by that background and that, that desire to solve clinical problems, bring in this photonics background as, a, as our toolkit. And you've done some work on smart dressings. What are smart dressings and, and what benefits uh, can we expect from them? Sure. So smart dressings, I, I, it, it's, a, it's a loose definition. So uh, there, are, um, there are a number of kind of range of how you would define what a smart dressing is. But for the purposes of today, I would define smart dressings as, as bandages or wound dressings or sensing technology that goes into um, a material that covers a wound and allows us to gain deeper insights into what the wound is doing, how the wound is healing, and more importantly, how the wound is not healing. So what are, what's going on inside a wound that is not leading to an optimal outcome? And there's a lot that can occur, right? You can have individuals who are say, you know, diabetic and they have um, a real challenge in having wound healing occur because the wound won't close, because there's poor oxygenation, because it's infected. And so smart dressings, um, some of the things my team is working on, uh, you know, the work by Rogers and others out in the field are really looking at how can we integrate sensing technology and wound healing technology into something that can be put over a wound that actually informs a caregiver or a doctor or a patient what's going on under that bandage, how can we improve the performance of wound healing, and, and ultimately, how can we improve the quality of life and the rate of healing for uh, for our patients. You have also done some work on smart dressings. Uh, what are smart dressings and what benefits can we expect from them? So most people, when they think about a wound dressing or think, think about going to CVS or your Walgreens or whatever, buying a Band-Aid and putting it on, right? Um, 
And those are, those are kind of your traditional gauze type adhesive bandages, right? You, you have, you know, what, what do they do? They do two main things, right? They cover the wound and protect it. And that's super important um, because you don't want a wound sitting out in the world. It can get infected. It can dry out all these things. And then you have a, um, a, an absorbent material, right? Then the gauze that absorbs blood and other things that ooze out of the wound, so-called exudate or transudate. Um, and you want to do both, right? You want to protect and you want to, um, you want to be able to absorb what comes out of the wound. And this is really important for more complex wounds, um, for deeper wounds, for more widespread wounds, and for wounds where you absolutely don't want to scar or anything coming out of that. There are more advanced wound dressings that can be used and hydrogels are one of these types. Um, so if you think about what is a hydrogel, a hydrogel is a big three-dimensional network of polymers that um, hydro that hold water. So they are, um, they're, they're usually hydroscopic. So um, hydroscopic means they absorb water very much like the material in the baby's diaper, right? They're gonna absorb fluid and they're usually gonna swell. Um, and this is what hydrogels do really well. Now, hydrogels, can go right onto wounds. They could be adhesive in their own right. And they, they act almost like a second skin. So they, they keep the wound moist, which is extremely important. There's been numerous studies showing that a moist wound heals better, heals faster with less scarring overall and has less chances of becoming infected. So that's a good thing. You don't want a dry wound, you want a moist wound. They keep it moist. They absorb that exudate really well. And because they are a three-dimensional network that absorbs fluid, they don't need to be changed as often either. So you can put these right on to a very complex wound and they kind of act like, like, a, like a scab in its own way. It stays on, it absorbs the fluid, and, it, um, uh, and then when the wound is healed, they, they, they can be removed. They can be changed as well. But hydrogels are, are really important in this. And they, they're what you would call an advanced wound healing system. And there are many different types of hydrogels. There are natural ones, there's alginate, there are, there are synthetic ones like we like using called, based on things like called, called PEG, polyethylene glycol. Um, but they're all biocompatible materials that, um, that help wounds heal faster, better, and keep them in a state that is better for, their, um, for the eventual healing of the wound itself. And so you recently developed a new solution, which is a smart dressing and involves hydrogels. What have you been working on with your colleagues? Yeah, so, so I, am, I am blessed to have an incredible team that I, I get to work with, as well as, um, as, well as collaborators. Uh, as, as, and, and, and we've been working for years in the development of technology that allows us to integrate oxygen sensing within wounds. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Um, it, you can imagine that, you know, our, 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 our skin does a lot of things for our body, right? It's a, it's a waterproof barrier that keeps things from going, coming in and it keeps water and other things from going out. And when our skin is in place, when our skin is healthy, the oxygenation of our skin is, is pretty tightly controlled. I could put a bandage on anyone listening to this and It'll pretty much report about the, you know, ox our oxygen sensors can report pretty much the same oxygenation. But when you have disruption to the skin, atopic dermatitis, skin inflammation, psoriasis, or a wound, the oxygenation changes. And how that oxygenation changes is related to the status of the wound, how the wound is healing, how inflamed the wound is. It gives, a, gives you kind of a, a sixth sense, if you will, for how that wound is, is behaving. And this is really important because of what I just talked about, we, 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 when we have a wound, we, 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 we cover it, we hide it away from the world. And we're, you know, in, if you want to peek under and take a look at it, what you see, uh, first of all, you're disrupting the wound by taking it off. And the second, and second piece is what we do, what clinicians do, and I'm not a clinician by training, I'm a PhD, but what clinicians tell me they do is very qualitative. So they'll pick the wound up, they'll poke it, they'll sniff it right? That's the smell test is very important. And that's kind of the qualitative means about how they assess this. If we can use something like oxygen, we have a means of doing something quantitative and we don't have to pull necessarily the wound, the dressing off to do it. We'd like to be able to do it in the wound. And that's what a lot of this whole idea of smart dressings allow you to do is keep the wound on, sense what's happening beneath it, 
and don't necessarily have to disrupt the wound or open it up. So we've been developing these oxygen sensing tools for years, and it combines my love for photochemistry, for molecules that are colored, uh, that change color, and, um, and synthetic chemistry. And so uh, along with individuals with my team in particular, Maniolos Rusakis and others, um, we've developed these porphyrin molecules. Um, they're a lot like, a lot like porphyrins in your body, right? They're very similar to the structure of heme that's in every single red blood cell in your body. But these are special because what they do is they glow. And if you combine it, if you combine this molecule that glows red with another uh, molecule that glows green, you can actually make a traffic light response. And so the, the, this molecule, it's a porphyrin, and the amount of red it glows is inversely proportional to oxygen. So what does that mean? That means the more oxygen is there is, the less it glows. So if you have a green, and if you're green, if something glows green all the time, and you have your R porphyrin, which only glows red when the oxygen is low, when the oxygen is, we have good oxygenation levels, it glows green and everything's fine. But as oxygen levels drop, the red gets brighter and brighter. And so the behavior of this material changes from green to kind of a yellow color to, to red. And it gives you a very clear visual indicator. You can see it with your eyes. You can take a picture with a smartphone of how this changes. So Haley Marks in my team, a very talented postdoc, created a hydrogel system that integrated these oxygen sensing molecules, the ones that change color, into the dressing itself, into a hydrogel material all on its own. And we worked very closely with our collaborator, Mark Grinstaff, who's just down the street at uh, Boston University to build these using some of his advanced hydrogel materials. And what this, what this, what this does is it creates a hydrogel material that is, has a green to red color change depending on how well oxygen, oxygenated the wound is. It can absorb exudate perfectly well because that's a really important piece. And the, um, and the color change allows us to monitor what's going on within the wound itself. Now, I want to mention that in many ways, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? We are not the first to do oxygen sensing. We're not the first to propose it. Um, there's been some wonderful work by Lovell, some great work by Wolf Beast and his colleagues, um, where they created these kind of films and foils that you could put over skin, over wounds, and those would change um, either color or they would change the amount of this red light that came out. And that could be used um, in principle to monitor what's happening in wounds. The challenge with the prior work, and again, they, they can only achieve so much in one step, is that, the, is that those, those materials, even some of the ones we created in the past, can't go on an open wound because they don't absorb the exudate, the transudate that comes out of a wound. And so they would just, all this material would flow out and these, and the foils and films would basically either bubble up or flow off. So they're not, they're good for telling you what's going on, but they can't stay on. The key piece here is, is generating this hydrogel material that goes on the wound and acts as a standard advanced wound healing hydrogel, but in addition has the oxygenation readout that allows you to look at it, take a picture, um, and be able to quantify the oxygenation within the wound as a metric of wound healing. So this was this was the um, this the, this was uh, recently uh, published, and we're very excited about the work. And we've gotten a lot of interest from companies and others who really would like to translate this technology. But I would mention that the, the you know the the key part of this that I think and, and that really that we had to so there's all this prior work, but the key part that we really had to overcome. The key challenge here, and Haley did a phenomenal job of this, is how is how to get this porphyrin material, how to make it work in a hydrogel, how to make it stay in a hydrogel, and how to make it safe. Because of course, this porphyrin is so far not FDA approved. So um, she did a, uh, some brilliant work along with Maniolis Rusakis and some other, other individuals in my team and members of the Grinstaff lab to determine how to grow kind of adaptive layers on, on top of this porphyrin. So Haley grows what's called a dendromer. This is, again, we're not the first to create these, but a dendromer around these porphyrins. And what we do is we start with the porphyrin and we grow it like layers of an onion. And we put more and more layers on. And Haley's insight was to grow layers around this porphyrin that look just like the hydrogel. 
So it, it so it, it, we used a PEG hydrogel. This was a PEG dendrimer. And the, the method she used was then to mix this together and to cross-link this three-dimensional network with the porphyrin in it as part of the hydrogel. And this worked beautifully well. She would wash it and very little would come off. And the final hydrogel could be dried and dehydrated as to something that could then be placed on a wound and used. And that's really the key next step is to take this material that's been created and now move this to next in, uh, in human studies. And so there's a real product coming out of this, um, hopefully, uh, which- That's will... what we hope, yes. And do you anticipate that uh, you will be able to bring this to the market soon or is still further work needed? So our hope is to go as fast as we possibly can because, you know, right now, right now there is a, it's, it's absolutely the case in the United States, right? We have a, 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 di a diabetes epidemic that's only going to get worse. Um, it does track with obesity levels and we can take a look at our aging population and see that, that diabetes is going to get worse. And a lot of diabetic patients suffer from diabetic neuropathy. That is, they have trouble, they don't have, they don't have good feeling, they, don't, they can't sense pain. A lot of them get um, peripheral ulcers because of this problem and because of the, the issues with osteostenosis. And so this is a, um, if you'd use the market term, this is a growing risk, right? And, um, you know, I think we, we knew this was something that we wanted to do. We knew this was a direction we had to do, but it didn't really hammer home until we, we went down to a colleague of mine who was at Boston Medical Center. And he wanted us to come down and visit with him. And he runs a wound care clinic for limb salvage. So basically people who have these, these horrible diabetic wounds that are on their legs. And when we got there, we were in the parking lot and we saw this line of people who are on crutches, leg bandages in wheelchairs. And there was a line going into the building. So we followed the line and it went to the elevator. So we walked up the stairs and it came, that line came out of the elevator, down the hall and into his clinic. And these are all people who, with his severe wounds, who are waiting to go in to see him and his and his um, and his nurses and his and his fellow doctors to have these wounds looked at. And you know, he said, "Look at this line, right? These are people who, if you could give them a bandage that glowed and tell them, you know, they could take a picture of that would say how their wound was doing, I wouldn't have to see half of them. They wouldn't have to come in and wait, and I could even find out, or maybe earlier, how I could treat them to prevent them from having to come and see me." And that was the wake-up call. That's when we said, oh my goodness, it, this is not just a problem in the future, this is a problem now, and it's only gonna get worse. So what, what can we do to make dressing smarter to help clinicians here? And so there's definitely some significant pressure. Um, we are working with, um, right now, I have a meeting tomorrow, uh, we, uh, with, um, with commercial partners. So I, I work with a phenomenal team at, uh, at leading companies who, who do wound care. Um, who want to translate this technology into their product stack and to push this out so we can get it to patients um, in, in a variety of form factors. So, you know, our, our case is it can't be fast enough, right? We know there are people suffering now who could benefit. There are going to be more people who are going to be suffering in the future. And we really want to make sure that we can tackle this very challenging problem in wound care and give clinicians and their patients the best tools we can to help them avoid problems, have the wound heal as efficiently and quickly as possible and get them on their way. So Connor, that's all very exciting. Um, let me wish you all the very best with uh, bringing your product to market and very best of luck uh, with your further work. Thank you. Thank you.